Hello, and welcome to another pocket process video. I'm Tracy, also known as Mercy Tiara, and I make scrapbooking process videos and more here on my channel. Today, I am working on a pocket spread using the MTK Small But Mighty Kit, which was designed to bridge the gap between your 12 by 12 scrapbooking and your smaller projects like pocket scrapping, traveler's notebooks, memory planning, and so on. I am starting with a whole bunch of photos here that I have printed up. And I also have some ephemera, including this bingo card from the art gallery, a book bag from a gift that a friend gave us, and a few other things. Now, those are likely going to be inserts. And in this video, you will not see me making those inserts. Those will be in a separate video. But here I am just going through what I have printed up for photos. I print my photos at a variety of different sizes, but they're always standard. So uh, any photos that are horizontal and good enough quality and important enough of a story, I print at four by six with a border on it. Anything that meets those criteria, but is a vertical photo, I print at three by four with a border on it. Then for lower quality photos or less important photos that don't need such space in my project, I print at two by three. And any screenshots I print at 1.8 by four because that tends to capture my entire screen for my phone that I have. Different models of phones will need to have a different uh, aspect ratio for printing up the full size of your phone. I am snacking on a chocolate dipped oat cake while I do this project and I do all of my videos in real time, usually live streamed with my Patreon supporters who we call tiaras. So if you are interested in becoming a tiara, it's actually very low cost for a very low monthly cost. You can hop on over to patreon.com slash mercy tiara and see what we've got. You can join for free. Uh, and get limited access to a few of my posts. But if you'd like full access, the lowest tier is $2. And I have a pay what you can approach where no matter how much you, you subscribe to, you get access to all the tiers. So one amount gets you access to every single thing. So here I am, as you can see, this page is super loaded up and filled with photos. And so it's going to take me a little bit to get this honed down to a smaller amount. It's becoming clear to me that I'm going to need to do two spreads for early July because we just had so much going on. And I'm also trying to remind myself that I don't have to scrapbook every single memory of our friend's visit to Halifax. I'm only trying to capture the highlights because they because I plan to capture their trip here as a whole separate six by eight album. So that so I have to keep that in mind. It's hard because I want to document it all, but that will come later. So I'm trying to remind myself to just include the highlights of their trip. Our friends were here from Germany. They were here for a little over two weeks. And uh, it was a really whirlwind trip for them. They did a lot of traveling. They did some traveling without us. But the days that they were here in Halifax, we spent pretty much all day, every day and all evening with them. So uh, it was a lot of a lot of fun and a lot of activity. I feel like I need a holiday from my holiday after all of the traveling that we did, the local traveling. I do want some flips on the left side of this page and because the pocket openings aren't on this side of the page, I have to use these flips by photo. They're, they're called photo flips and they're by snap, which is a simple story brand. And I am going to be using two of those on the left page here. You saw me place out all of my photos. That's always my very first thing that I do is I place out all the photos. And now I'm thinking about which things will have flips and, and photo pockets. And uh, I address that. And then I'll go back and put photo, put paper down behind any photos that need paper behind them. 
I'm actually cutting up some acetate right now because I ran out of it. I like to keep some acetate cut to four by six and three by four so that I can use it for the kind of thing I wanna use it on today. So you'll see that when I get to it. But for now, just know that I have a piece of four by six acetate there with that photo that has two photos in one pocket because that's what I'm going to be using there. So now that I have all of the photos sorted out and I know which ones will have two photos in one pocket or multiple photos in one pocket, so I'll need a flip for, I am pulling out my Small But Mighty kit from the Summer Lovin' kit. And I also have the extra pad of paper, this, this travel pad of paper with the Coast to Coast collection from American Crafts. It's over on the, the right hand side there. That is from the Adventure Awaits add-on, which was I think in February or March. I think it was March. So I have part of the Small But Mighty kit includes some solid six by eight papers and this is them and I'm just folding some of them to get these six by four by six inch flips. They hold a lot of photos. Now these two photos are each, it's sort of like two three by fours, but they're going to be side by side in a four by six pocket. So I'm just going to use one flip for both of these stories. And I'm hoping that that's gonna be clear that those are two stories, but it turns out it's not. And I'll talk about that when I get to it. So here's another photo flip that I'm doing. I love this map paper. It's adorable. I'm, I'm a sucker for illustrated maps. I love them so much and I always collect them whenever I go someplace. This is just part of the pattern paper in this Adventure Awaits. No, no, from Coast to Coast. It's the Coast to Coast collection. So I did cut that into a strip because I want to use it on the flip side of one of those. And then I also cut another strip. It was a, a solid yellow cardstock that I'd already cut into a photo flip, but I just cut it in half so that it could be a four by six instead. No, it could be a three by four instead of a four by six. Sorry if that's confusing. I know I stumbled around with my words there a little bit and I hope that you've followed what I said, but when we come to doing all of these cards, I'll say it again. So hopefully it'll make better sense. So basically these six by eight paper pads are a godsend to anybody who does these standard pocket pages use, especially if you use design a page protectors from Becky Higgins, because you just cut them in half and they're a four by six, cut them in quarters and they're three by fours. And if you leave it intact and score it down the center, you have a four by six flip and that's awesome. And then of course you can cut that in half to have a three by four flip. So there's lots and lots of great options to easily use these six by eight paper pads with pocket pages. I am pulling out some travel themed items here, including this gorgeous map paper. It's like a subway map and I love it. Then I'm also going to cut apart some of the cut aparts. I especially like this Adventure Awaits one. I think I'm gonna use it here, but it turns out I'm not going to use it. So we'll put that subway map paper on the inside of this flip. This flip has on one side, the one I'm taping right now is a photo of our public from the roof of our public library. And then this other photo is a really cool coffee shop we went to in Halifax that's painted entirely white. And then the whole thing is decorated with a black Sharpie marker. So it's like things are drawn on the wall to look like they're actually on the wall and stuff. So I took a couple of pictures in there and I wanted to include it going to trim this down just a little tiny bit so that it is matted on the back of that beautiful coral cardstock that comes in the small but mighty kit love that color it's so vibrant and rich it's just a dreamy color I love it so here is that photo of so I'm thinking about using some grid cards these are grid cards that are mtk grid cards they're not available yet for sale but they will be available soon I think that's what those are. They might be another kind of grid. They might be a grid card from my stash. I can't remember because I'm using so many different things here. Now, I do want to put some lines be below this photo. And I tend to forget when I'm, when I'm making my lines, sometimes I go a little bit too far. Like I forget that I'm trying to make them only go underneath the photo. So I've been using washi tape to 
mask off my stencil, my journaling stencil so that my lines only go where I want them to go. And even if I absentmindedly forget what I'm doing, I don't accidentally make my line go off the page. So there we go. And with this kind of a stencil, the center there is broken, but you just, you just hand draw it in and it looks a little bit shaky and not perfect. But once you've got your words on those lines, you won't be able to notice at all that those lines are imperfect in the center part. Now my journaling here says the cafe attached to Olaf and Nicole's hotel is called Zena's Bread and Butter. The entire cafe is painted white and decorated with drawings in black Sharpie. What a fun concept. We met Olaf and Nicole here before going out to the keg. So that's that part of it. And now I do have to do more journaling above the other photo. These photos are of course the exact same size because I print all my photos at standard sizes. So they're both three by four. That means that I can use the same journaling lines with the washi tape already there to keep me from going too far with those lines. I'll just attach them to each other here by hand and then do more journaling. This one says, Nicole wanted to visit our public library because she had read about its unique architecture and features. It was fun seeing the city from its rooftop. This pride book display was eye-catching. The girls took pics of seagulls from the rooftop too. And I wanted to remember that the girls took pictures of seagulls from the rooftop because I want to scrapbook about that because the Summer Lovin' Kit has this fantastic seagull paper that I definitely want to use for those photos, which they sent me. So I'm having a look at some of the other things that come in the small, not in the small but mighty, but in the Summer Lovin' 12 by 12 kit. And it has these fun embellishments and I'm just looking for something to put here. And I am going to end up finding this one. It says Easy Breezy. And I love this, but I feel like it's all going to be a little bit too dark if I put this on that subway paper. So what I've decided to do is just mat it in some white. So I'm just hand cutting around it to give it a little bit of a white edging or border around the outside edges. And I'm not being too careful about how I cut that. I just want it to be a border. It doesn't have to be perfect which is a good thing because it isn't. <laughs> so here comes my next flip. I do tend to do my flips first because they're the most fun and the most uh, labor intensive. So getting them done helps with my energy levels. If I run out of energy, I don't have the hardest things to do at the end. So here's a photo of the girls making bracelets before going to Germany for their uh, Taylor Swift heiress tour that they're going to. And so I put the four by six photo on the outside of the flip. And then on the inside, I have a close up photo of the bracelets with Liv in the background making them. And I had a picture of each of the kids like that, but this is the one that turned out the best. So I decided to use this one. I matted it in the yellow that I already had on hand from one of those flips and attached it to a grid. And I'm pretty sure that that grid is, it could be a grid from a Kelly Perky kit, but it could also be an MTK card. I'm not sure. So I trimmed down this beautiful piece of pattern paper from that same six by eight paper pad. And I just made it a little bit smaller so I could have a mat around the outside edge of it in that beautiful green. And now I'm going to do some journaling. I'm outlining it first with a green pit pen. Love that look. And now I'm going to do some journaling in black. Now my journaling says preparing for the Taylor Swift concert has involved lots of bracelet making on the deck in the living room and at the dining room table. The girls all listen to their favorite albums on blast while making these. They will trade with other Swifties at the concert. So there's that one. I do have my own Taylor Swift friendship bracelet of my own that says Karma, which is the name of our cat, which is named after her song Karma. And now I need to find something to put on the top of this card. 
like on the other, on the flip side of this card. So I found this one that says all things sunny. I just thought it was cheerful and bright and worked really well with that pattern paper. So I'm gluing it in the middle and then I'm just going to do scribbly doodly lines around the outside edge of it just to make it feel anchored on the page. And I really do like that flip. So now the two tops are done of that page. And now let's work on this card. So this is a meme from that I found on Facebook. I'm just cutting off some of the extra parts of it so that it's just the meme. And it says, in every relationship, there is one person who stacks the dishwasher like a Scandinavian architect and one who stacks it like a raccoon on crystal meth. And uh, I would, I, just to give you a hint of which one I am, I am not the Scandinavian architect. So we, we have moments in our house <laughs> where, where people stand in bewilderment of my, of my dishwashing skills, <laughs> of my dishwashing loading skills, and uh, wonder what planet I came from. But you know what? It all gets washed. It's all fine. It's sanitized. It's washed. It's okay if something touches another thing. That's what I think anyways. Um, however, there are people in my family who do not believe that. They think that nothing should ever touch anything else. <laughs> do you have any, um, do you have conflict over the dishwasher? Is that a thing in your house? And which side are you on? Are you the raccoon or are you the Scandinavian architect? I'd love to hear. So leave me a comment below. Raccoon or architect? Here I am adhering this photo which is the secondary photo I'm adhering it to the piece of acetate and then I'm going to back the photo on the other side of the piece of acetate with a three by four inch piece of this patterned paper and just gonna glue it on like that so basically the acetate is sandwiched with a photo on one side and a piece of pattern paper on the other side and this whole thing is going to go into a photo flip and it'll be see-through so that you can see live on the one side of it and then the other side will have the photo however I'm going to change my mind about that because I didn't I realized that I didn't actually want two photos of live layered on top of one another so you'll see what I do instead First, I'm going to use these stickers that came in the Small But Mighty kit, and I'm going to use them to spell out Making Swifty Bracelets. Once I get the word making done, I am going to outline it with my Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll White marker. It's a Jelly Roll 10, which is the thicker of the two that I have. I have an 8 and a 10. And this just really brightens up these letters quite a bit more than they were when they were just plain on the card. I will also outline the tile letter stickers, just the outside square edges of them. And then finally, I will also outline the, word, the letters of the word bracelets with my, the same white pen which ends up looking like this. And as you can see, it's so bright and it really pops on the page. I love how it looks. And here's where I decide, ah, uh, I think I'd rather have this title beside Liv instead of having the photo beside Liv. So instead of taking it all apart, it's only a thin piece of acetate, it's okay. So I decided that what I would do is just cut it. And now I have a leftover three by four inch piece of acetate, which I do like to have on hand as well for other reasons. So um, I am going to leave that piece of acetate attached to that. It's Since I took it apart anyways, I could have very well taken the whole thing off and reattached it, but I just, I don't know what I was thinking. I just didn't want to. So I did have a second piece of that acetate, so I'm just going to adhere it this way. So it just had to be on the other side so that I can place this in the little pouch here and it lies over top of that other card with a window that you can see live through. And so that ends up working really well. Now I'm going to glue these two photos together because they will go in the same four by six pocket. And I'm actually not going to do anything to these two. 
It's just a picture of the restaurant that we ate at, the outside of it, and then also us inside. Next, I have this photo of Jen and the girls at the movie theater. Jen took them to see Inside Out 2. So I am going to just take this. I'm going to trim it down a little bit because when it's exactly four inches long, it is a little bit harder to fit. And I like to see a little bit of the card around the top and the bottom of it. So I just trim it down a little wee bit. And then I glued it along the side where the names of the colors were on that card. And then I'm going to cut out some labels. I'm going to end up using this one, which is a navy blue label. These labels are designed to coordinate perfectly with the Summer Lovin' Scrapbooking Kit, which also coordinates with the Small But Mighty Kit. So I have some adhesive on that, and I'm just going to place it right there. And I'm simply writing, Jen brought the girls to see inside out too. And that's it card done. Now this one needs a flip as well and again this is on the left hand side so I need to use a plastic photo flip which is a flip up and I'm just thinking about what I want to put on the inside of this flippity flap and I remembered that there was airplane paper in the um, adventure awaits. It's not it's not adventure awaits it's um I forget what that paper pad is called but I said it at the very beginning. It is by American Crafts, and it was in our Adventure Awaits um, add-on. So I'm just going to fold that airplane paper and adhere the 4x6 photo to the outside of it. And then put the other photo on the inside here. And then I realize, what am I doing? I'm making this be a flip for the right hand side of the page, but this one needs to be on the left hand side of the page. <laughs> so I can't do it that way. So I decided to do it the proper way so that I can actually adhere this to the outside of the pocket page. So these were the little strips on the top of the, like the designer strips on the top of the paper, cut it into two little chunks and put it at the top and at the bottom just to add a little bit of interest. And then I'm going to look for some type of a sentiment or a sticker or something that I can put in the center here that will work. At first, I am spelling out something. I can't remember what I spelled because I didn't end up using it because it didn't look right. So I'm not sure what that is that I was spelling, but it's not it's not going to work. I don't love how it looks. Uh, yes, I was spelling out welcome. No, I don't like how it looks. So I'm going to pull all of these off and I'm putting them back on the sticker sheet, but they never do completely stick on that sticker sheet. So I think I'm going to have to just sacrifice them and not use them because they're they're curling up and sticking to everything else. So they're making a bit of a mess. Here's that Adventure Awaits kit. It's been a while since I've used it, so it's all back in its bag. I'm having a look at what else came in that kit so that if there's any travel themed things that I want to use here, I can remember to use them. So I'm thinking about what else I might want to put in the center of this card. That is the flip side of it shows Sophie waiting at arrivals with a welcome sign for Annabelle and then Annabelle and her parents running, walking through the, the airport. So now on this beer picture, I'm just putting Propeller Brewery Bedford and I'm just writing it around the edge of one of the glasses. And that's all that I'm doing for that one. Here's another flip. On the inside, I'm placing this photo of on the, on the outside, I'm putting the photo of the Citadel and her, she taking the picture of the Citadel. And then on the inside, I'm taking a picture of Nicole with her camera in the daytime. Just going to trim that down. And that's it for that. I love that map paper on the other side of it. 
And now in this one, I am documenting, I've got several screenshots here of the New York Times puzzle app or games app, which we play every morning. We've been playing it for a couple months now. Every single morning, we do the connections and the strands. We do not do the Wordle. I'm not a fan of Wordle. I actually really dislike Wordle, um, but we love connections and they recently started strands and we like that one too. So I'm spelling out puzzle. These are letters from the Small But Mighty kit from this past month. So this would be the Summer Love and Small But Mighty kit. And then I knew that there were letters from the other, the original Small But Mighty kit, which was put out last fall. And it has these purple letter stickers in it that pick up on the purple in the Connections puzzle. And because Connections is one of the puzzles that we actually do, I thought it would be nice to emphasize it by picking up on the color. So there we go. I am going to put those stickers back into the original Small But, Small but Mighty kit that they came in so that if I need to find them again, I know where they're at. I am cutting off the phone header and footer on these photos so that they're quite a bit shorter than they otherwise were. And the top photo just shows that we have a group chat that consists of both of my daughters and my husband and I, and we just text each other back and forth what our scores were on these puzzles every day. We kind of race to see who can finish it first and get to post first without making any, any errors. And uh, so this says, Scott and I have been doing the connections puzzle daily for several months. It's our way of connecting in, in quotations before our busy days start. So we just kind of sit down on the couch and do it quietly together. And sometimes we'll help each other out, but we try not to. Usually we don't want the other person's help. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we do. <laughs> We're not super competitive, but sometimes, sometimes we get a little competitive. <laughs> I'm looking for something that I can just put in this little spot here and just in this little gap. Just felt like it needed something. So I'm just grabbing some pattern paper. That other photo is just an example of what the connections puzzle looks like when you're in the middle of trying to solve it. So there we go. We just took two little pieces of pattern paper to fill in the gaps on that one. And that's all we needed. Now for this one, I have this beautiful stripey paper that I scored down the middle to make a flip. And I put one photo on the outside and one photo on the inside. And then on the flip side, I have to decide what I'm going to do. So I'm trying to see if I have all the letters that I need for Cafe Lunette. And I'm also spelling it out on a piece of paper so that I can tell where the center is and then go out from there. I'm using these very large letter stickers that come in the Small But Mighty kit. There's two sets of these green ones and two sets of the yellow ones in this kit, as well as several sets of the Keys letter stickers. So I put Lunette in the larger letters and then I put Cafe in the smaller letters. And I've got this giant gap at the top of the page here. I didn't have an E, so I just used an F and then took a branch of something else to make it into an E. And there we go. Now there is a big gap on the top of that that I want to cover with something. And I would love it to be that pattern paper. So let's find a bigger piece of it. There, there it is. So that piece is the perfect width, of course, because it's four by six. So let's take a piece of it. I'm marking it and I will trim it down. And then I'm going to take my border punch. This is the double embossed dotted lace border punch, which is a misnomer. It's, it's not actually embossed or dotted or lace. <laughs> It's a, it's a large scallop. 
Um, and I am going to outline the edges of it. It looks a little bit like a cafe curtain, I thought, as I outlined those scallops. And I thought that was kind of nice since it is a cafe. It was a, it was fancier than a cafe. It was like a little bistro-y type of restaurant is what it was. Not, not exactly a cafe. So now that I have completed this page, I'm going to put it all together. And you can watch me do that. A lot of people tell me that they find it satisfying to watch the pages come together. This, by the way, is a die cut that I made as a series of monthly die cuts that I, I made them all at once and I intended to use them throughout my project life or pocket pages for the year of 2024. And I just haven't been doing it because I haven't been doing it. I haven't been doing project life. So I did it in January and then I skipped a bunch and picked it up in June and now I've got it in July as well. So those little flippity flaps by, by Simple Stories, as you can see, they just attach with a sticker paper on the back of them. Now this one is going to interfere with my holes. So I'm just going to stick it down outside of the binder so that I can stick it. And then I have to take my hole punch and actually punch the hole through there so that I can so that you can still use this page protector. So I'm punching it twice because it's a wide hole. So before I end this video, I just want to do a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen. So big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad free access to all of my videos and process videos and also real time unedited versions of my videos, usually in the form of a live stream. I'm live streaming weekly for now. Uh, and I'm really loving it. And we've got quite a little crew of people who join every week. And that's really fun and nice. And we get to know each other quite well and support and inspire one another. It's really quite lovely. So there's also behind the scenes videos of my room and my process and the warehouse as well. So thanks to them. And thanks to you also for watching all the way to the end. I do hope that you enjoyed this pocket process. And if you did, please leave me a comment below and let me know and give me a thumbs up as well. Take care and have yourself a really great scrappy week.